Rack Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for another episode of Frag Tag Radio. And here with you today are your boys. Radius, aka Michael Buffer, <laughs> <laughs> and J Ray. As a matter of fact, all right. So, uh, first, we got to get those plugs out there, and you know, J Ray is the man. <laughs> Go ahead, let him know. Let him know. You want me to let him know what it, what it is, what it do? All right. Well, anyway, uh, you can find us on the Appy Gamer. World of Video Game News, Game RSS, Game On, Shouts to Troy, Shouts, <laughs> Xbox One News, and Xbox Game News. All terrific apps. All terrific apps. Uh, all of those are on Android except for Game On, I believe. And uh, that one is on iOS and Windows Phone, so you can get it there. We're also available on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, Twitch, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and then FragTagRadio.com. Where you, you can get it, yeah. 15 seconds mm-hmm. before it goes up everywhere else, you got to get that exclusive. <laughs> and uh, one last thing before we roll roll into the reviews. Uh, we have the contest going on right now. We're giving away uh, free retail copies of Call of Duty Ghost for 360 and Need for Speed Rivals for Xbox One. All you got to do is hit up the website FragTagRadio.com. Go to that article right there. Leave a comment at the bottom saying why you deserve Call of Duty Ghosts or Need for Speed Rivals more than anybody else in the whole world. Also, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and you are automatically entered into the Frag Tag Radio trucker hat of justice. And make sure you do. Don't just comment on the thing because if you comment on the site and we go back and you're not following us on YouTube or Twitter, uh, that disqualifies you. So you yeah. know, all you got to do, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, and then comment. That's yeah, because last three contest things. we had, we you know our, our, our first place winner who we drew out the hat was actually not following on Twitter. Had, 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 had to, had, you know what yep, I mean? Had, yep. to, had to get that Grand so Theft Auto sure. care package in second, second place, you know? Yep. Yep. Not a lot to ask. All you got to do is just follow, subscribe, comment. Yep. Three steps. Easy. Easy. Follow, subscribe, <laughs> comment. It don't get no easier than that. It doesn't get no easier than that. It, don't, it doesn't. All right. So, uh, moving on in um, Titanfall. Epic. You know what I mean? The dropship has come and we've been preparing for EVAC. <laughs> It's been a crazy, crazy last week and some change. Uh, Speaking of which, real quick, did you see that a guy is already Gen 10? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's ridiculous. Wow. It, it, it pretty much is, yeah. That's, that's just ridiculous. Non-stop I mean, like, I've seen be. some Gen 4s, but I, I haven't seen anything above a 4 really yet. You know? Well, you remember, if you remember the day... After it came out, we played, there was already a guy who was a Gen 2. Yeah. And wow. he was like a 47 Gen 2. And we were like, that guy hasn't slept. Yeah. This really. was like less than 24 hours after the game officially released. So either, either he had the game to review yeah. and got a head start on everybody or... Yeah, because... He's dedicated. Because we had the game for like three or four days before it came out. So I had a head start. And when the game came out, I was like level 30 something. And now I'm level, I think, 43 uh, Gen 2. So I'm getting close to Gen 3. Uh, but, you know, and I feel like I've been playing a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you would very just, little You sleep. would have had to have not slept. I mean, there's... To get Gen 10. Gen 10? Now, yeah. n- now, granted, every time you move to another generation, you level up faster. Like, generation... Uh, when you level up to generation 2, you get XP at uh, 1.1x... And then Generation 3, 1.2x, and all the way up to Generation 10, which will give you 2x, so you'll be getting double the amount of XP. Either way, though. That's time it's all that time it's... I mean, that's still, yeah. Uh, you would have had, had to have not slept. Yeah. I Either mean, way. But yeah, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome game. Uh, you know, without a doubt, the best game on Xbox One to date. Yeah. It's definitely a console mover. 
Um, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm typically not a huge multiplayer guy, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's taken me completely away from all my other games since it's come mm-hmm. out, and uh, I love it. You know, of course, there's a couple things that we'll get to here in a little bit that we would like to see at it or whatever. You know, that we were kind of missing, but other than you know, nothing, nothing major, and I, I love it. Oh, uh, so, all right, so, yeah, we definitely want to talk about some of the stuff that we would like to see, but uh, I guess let's uh, let's start out with the campaign, this uh, multiplayer campaign. Thoughts on that? I thought it worked, but not well. Right. Um. You know, I, I don't think it replaces a real campaign, but I did think it was interesting how they integrated story elements into a multi- multiplayer aspect. I thought that was neat, uh, but I do think it falls short of an actual campaign. And then another thing was it, it just felt like too short of a campaign. Yeah. It's only nine missions long. You can beat it in two and a half hours. They should have made it at least 15 to cover every map. Right. And then the last mission you do, um, without telling you how it ends, it just feels like the story's just beginning. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, the, the story, it took me two or three times through the campaign. It felt kind of like half a story. Took me two or three times through the campaign to actually kind of grasp the entire story, which is a little all over the place. I know something I was playing. It's it's yeah. hard to follow because some of the the voiceovers and stuff. When you're in the middle of a attrition match or a hard yeah. point match, and yeah. you're not yeah, really yeah, listening or focusing to what's being said on the radio, yeah. And uh, I don't know the the story was okay. It wasn't nothing special. I don't want to throw out any spoilers, but there's you know a couple turn cloaks going on and and it. And it yeah. You know, just it, it's well, okay. It's got some betrayal in there, you yeah. know. But, but um, it overall, um, I just kind of felt like um, it was it was it was ha- it was it was half a story. Um, you, um, like I said, nine missions long, and also um, it only had attrition and hard point matches. Yeah, they could have kind of incorporated a last Titan standing maybe in one yeah. match, or uh, capture the flag, or pilot hunter something. You know, that's enough. Well, I guess we're going to get into what we want to see, you know. But, right. yeah, uh, I, I mean, it seemed, like, overpopulated with attrition. Yeah. It, it definitely could have thrown in a little bit more hard I think there's there. only four hard point matches total. Yep, the, and they, they come early and late. The last two are hard point. Right. And, like, the, two of the first three are hard point. In between that, it's all attrition. Yeah, the, the first match is hard point, and then you play attrition all the way until the fourth to last mission. The fourth to last mission is a hard point. Then you play one last attrition and then two hard points. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, you know, it, 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 they they could have they, they could have broke it up better. You know what I mean? Also, the be- some of the best maps aren't a part of the campaign. Yeah, like Lagoon. Yeah, and I, Nexus isn't a part of the campaign either, is no. it? No, and that's a good match. Is Rise part of the campaign? Smuggler's Cove. <laughs> that's in there. Yeah, good God. What about Rise? Is Rise part of the campaign? I can't remember if that was part of the no, campaign. No, uh, Sm- Smuggler's Cove wasn't in the campaign either. Smuggler's Cove, I thought, was the third one. No, that was Colony. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, you're right. That was to get Barker. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, some of the best matches, uh, maps are not even part of the campaign, which is kind of odd, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was okay, you know. I, I don't really have any gripes about it. And, um, now, and with that being said, since it is multiplayer, I've actually found myself playing the campaign multiple times. Where if it was a Call of Duty campaign, I would have played it once, never looked back. But, uh, I've actually played the campaign multiple times, probably a good 13, 14 times. Yeah. You know, just because it, you know, it's just like multiplayer. You know what I think would have been a cool idea is if with the campaign, rather than just having your standard hard point and attrition, maybe kind of take it to another level. Like, for instance, you are going to get this Get Barker. Maybe have two people going after this guy yeah. and having having that kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, objective. Or a, as, uh, you know, going for destru- just unique objectives that are yeah. different from your standard multiplayer you know yeah. i think they could have done that and really made it cool whereas you know rather than just say okay this is a hard point match but here's a story say here's a story and this is what you got to do to accomplish it and have different endings whereas if you're playing as the imc and you lose the match yeah it goes one way you know? You know, yeah yeah because as it is now no matter whether you win or lose it's the same, same outcome right and, and i know that's kind of hard to do with players jumping in and out of matches right you know but they could have done it to where you saved your progress, so when those players come back in, they get to that same spot, yeah. and they have you know. There's ways that they 
could have probably gotten around it, or maybe not even branch it out to that extent, but at least have multiple outcomes based on if you win or lose. Right. All right, so multiplayer. Let's talk about what's there. Um, obviously, attrition um, is pretty much like a team deathmatch, uh, except for you get points for also killing the grunts and specters. Killing the minions, yeah. Uh, whereas Pilot Hunter is team deathmatch, uh, and but you don't get points for killing the grunts and specters. Now, uh, they still take off your build time for your Titan. Right, but they, they don't they give you that. any, any no points. attrition points. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of people were under the impression that since it was called Pilot Hunter mode, that there would be only pilots and that there would be no Titans. But that's not true either. You can call down your Titan and use your Titan in Pilot Hunter mode. Just like you can actually use your pilot in Last Titan Standing. Right. Yeah. But there are some modes that are noticeably missing. And what I mean by that is free for all. Where yeah. the hell is free for all? Yeah, yeah. Why is that not there? Also, uh, kind of like a, a demo, uh, a demolition type match, like a, a destroy, plant the bomb, yeah. destroy the bomb, search and destroy, search and destroy. Well, you could have done either one. One where search and destroy, you die, you're dead. Yeah, that's a unique game type that makes people not well, just like, run uh, and gun. True. Yeah. Infection. That'd be yeah. That'd be cool. Or or, or you know another thing. or. Instead of having just regular old free fall, have like oddball from Halo Four, where it's one guy's holding the ball and yeah. whoever's holding the ball, everybody goes after him, and you just kind of you know keep going back. That'd be pretty fun with Titans. Yeah. Regardless, point being, there's not enough modes for a game that is multiplayer only, that yeah. only has multiplayer. It should have been filled with modes and options. Right. In my point of view. And yeah. and what. Well, while it is lacking in modes, it does have a good number of maps out of the box. It does. Oh, it has a lot of maps. That's one area that it does have a good amount of. In fact, there's so many maps that I've I'm a level 35, and which I know isn't overly high, but I've only played Lagoon for a half a match. Yeah. So. And you've been trying pretty hard. But to I've been trying there. really hard because it's the best map in the game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they, there should have been a lot more modes for sure. There, there definitely should have been. Um, that that was one area that kind of disappointed me, and I'm hoping they're going to add some more. Right. You know. Um, but you know, I guess we'll see. Uh, so, and your go-to gun is uh, the CAR uh, submachine gun. That's my favorite. I, but I, I I've just unlocked it recently, a couple levels ago, and I always used the burn cards or picked it up on the ground. Right. I, but um, I use the R101C. Yeah. What, that's my favorite gun, and then also the regular submachine gun. I tried that. And I don't know, man. I, I just I don't I didn't do very well with it. So. Once you get the H Cog side on there, it's a whole new world. Yeah, maybe that's what world. I should do. Um, I use just to, to go through my loadout. I use the carbine or the CAR. I use the hollow sight on the carbine, <coughs> the H Cog on the CAR, yeah. um, and then I use the suppressor when I'm playing hard point, or I use the extended clip on attrition. Right. Then I use active radar pulse. On attrition and cloak on hard point. Arc mines. I on pretty much point. always use extended clip, unless sometimes when I'm playing hard point, I'll throw on the suppressor instead. Yeah. Well, it, it just kind of keeps you a little bit more hidden, but it definitely takes a little bit of power away. Yeah. But um, also active radar pulse. I've found myself liking more and more often, even in hard point, because you can tell. Like we were playing together last night, you were using cloak, and I was like, All right, "There's a guy coming through that window," because I can right. see him. You can tell the minions from the other ones because they move a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Right. And they jump. Minions don't typically jump. Mm. So um, Spectres do, though. Yeah, Spectres do, but you can tell by the outline of their, their body. Right. You know, and Spectres always jump straight up mm -hmm. and then land on top of something. They don't jump like at an angle. Active Radar Pulse is a, is a lovely addition. Now, a lot of people like STEM. STEM, to me, has never really been... I, I never really liked it. It just know? makes you move a little faster. And, and health regeneration. Yeah, health regeneration a little bit faster. But, uh, you know... I, arc mines for hard point are crucial. Yeah. Um, and uh, hard point, dude. Arc mines are. <laughs> yeah. Gotta have them. Frag grenades mm. for attrition, and then I use the mag launcher for taking down titans, which I found is a beast. I t I've taken down a lot of titans with that. The mag launcher because it's automatic. You can just do do do, and it sticks to the titans. You can do them a titan really quick with the mag launcher. Um, so that's my loadout. Uh, I also use the uh, what's the kit that allows your your the recharge tactical battery. ability. Yeah, yeah, I use that. Yeah, gotta then, have that with cloak. So you, I mean, you use that, and you can pretty much stay cloak most of the time. Yeah, and I haven't unlocked the, the many of the tier two, so I still use the minion detector because the warp field emitter or whatever isn't 
doesn't no, do shit. really the only other good perk from tier two is the one that makes your titan more accurate and you don't unlock that till 49 which is the next to last level yeah and if you plan on you know uh prestiging or you know moving up generations then you're never really going to use that because you're only going to have it for one level between each generation and that's something that you're not really going to be able to enjoy until you hit that 10th generation yeah also, the uh, the Titan loadout, I use the Ogre. That's what you use too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, I use the uh, the machine gun. I use that and I use the quad launcher. I, I, switch back I use the machine gun and the arc cannon. I switch back before between those. I use the, uh, the, um, the for my ordnance, I use the one the, the second one, the one that rocks on the warhead, slaved warheads. Yeah. Not I, the rocket salvo. But that's what I use, rocket salvo. Yeah, and um, what do you use for your tactical ability? For the vortex. Tactical? See, I use that most of the time too, but I actually found that... A the, lot of people use that particle wall. The particle wall is nice, yeah. that The, the electric smoke is only good for, for when for people titans. jump on yeah. you. Or, or when or people jump on your back. pilots get on your back. Yeah, yeah. That, it's really good for that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I got I for one of my kits I use the one that makes you recharge faster, right? Uh, your uh your warhead your ordnance recharge faster and the other yep. one that makes I, you a regen. I use the same one. Uh, my second one I I use uh the pilot auto eject that ejects you automatically and cloaks you. Yeah. So, but yeah, great game. Uh, so um, you've been playing over my house on mm-hmm. and off. Uh, what are your overall thoughts? What's your favorite weapon? Uh, probably just the well, I, I never Carbon. really yeah. I mean, it seems like this, you know, safe thing to use, really. And you get used to it. But, I mean, the whole thing about that game, which is... I haven't, you know, messed with any of your loadouts or anything like that because I didn't want to mess with it. But, yeah, I mean, when I eventually get it, I would like to just delve into all the different options yeah. and see what you can really do. But even then, I mean, the loadouts we were using... I mean, it's still a fun game. Have oh, you yeah. ever used a hemlock? The That's like the hammer burst type of gun. Yeah, I tried that last night when we were playing. And uh, I didn't do very well with it, but I feel like I could get good with it. It's a it's a, a burst. burst yeah, yeah, it's a burst gun. Um, it, it's dope though. It's powerful, but you got to be accurate with it because you miss you miss even one yeah. shot. You're not going to have the the, the, yeah. uh, the fire rate to get back in the gunfight. So no. And then I have noticed a lot of more people using the uh, the G. light the, the the light machine gun lately. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good one. To, that's supposed to be really. My good. My first few days playing the game, I didn't see no one using it, and you know, obviously, some of that was because they hadn't unlocked it yet. But uh, now, I, I seem, I feel like I see a lot more people using that. Yeah, I, I've used that through burn cards a few times. Really powerful, but um, I love it when you get the burn cards that let you call down a titan at the very beginning of a match. Love them. Yeah. Yeah. Espe- I, especially if you're playing attrition, boy, call down that ogre right off the bat. You get in there and you just roll the around. The best burn cards down. I've found are the ones that allow you to have a tactical ability permanently on while keeping your equipped tactical ability. Like permanently cloaked, wow. but being able to use stem. Or permanently stemmed, but being able to use a- active radar pulse. That, those are beasts. Yeah. But, but they're, they're rare. The permanent cards, yeah. They're rare. Yeah, those you you only get one of them at a time because like sometimes if you do good in a match, it'll like give you a pack and it'll be three or three of the same card. Well, I noticed that at certain levels, I think it's like twenty nine or twenty eight, and like uh, seventeen or eighteen, you get a burn card pack, and it comes oh, yeah. with like seven burn cards and a, you'll you get hit, some rare ones in those. When you hit level fifty, um, regardless of whether you uh, prestige or not, it gives you. Uh, a rare burn pack, and it gives you uh, one for each Titan, lets you call down a Strider, an uh, Ogre, and an Atlas, and it gives you uh, one of each of the permanents. Oh. The, per- the permanent cloak, the permanent stem, the permanent radar pulse. Wow. Yeah. That's a hell of a pack. Yeah. I find myself not wanting to use them, though. I'm like, man, I don't want to use this, you know? But got to save this for one of those hard matches. Yeah, when I'm not doing so well. But, uh, yeah, Titanfall is a... a, a beast of a game it's it's fun insanely fun so um what we'd like to see in the future like i then pretty much covered some of it uh some more modes definitely uh, a real um, campaign yeah uh, the, split split screen would have been nice the ability to choose or uh, well private matches and the ability to vote on maps vote on maps oh, yeah. and the ability to custom name your custom loadouts absolutely why the hell is that not there that's so weird yeah it is but um, overall, I'm thinking four and a half frags for Titanfall. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, with the only thing holding it back from a perfect five being that the campaign could have been a little better. Agreed. Agreed, yeah. There it is, four and a half. Titanfall, go get it. 
All right, so, uh, and then, uh, Matt, you've been getting down on South Park. I actually did the written review recently, and, yeah. and you've been playing it, so uh, how you feeling about it? I love that game. I didn't think I'd like it at first, but the combat in it's fun. It is. It makes you want to keep, you know, trudge through Remind it. Reminds you of you the know? old RPGs yeah. from back in the day. Really but, nice. you know, it's entertaining. Plus, you know, you, if you wait too long to make a selection, they start taunting you a little. Like, you know, I gotta go home, you know, something like that. Right. But just the, the it's a huge game. It's bigger than what I thought it was going to be. It seems like where I'm at now, there's different you know, stories. Yeah. You know, dealing with, like, you know, the new Taco Bell they're building. or It's cool to have a full-fledged map of South Park. Yeah. It's the first time it's ever That's been That's true, realized, yeah. Because I noticed know? I looked at the map, I've never really, you know... It was pretty neat. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, you go all, all up and down the streets, oh, go yeah. into buildings, and... Unlock those, uh, the customers. fast travel locations, yeah, the Teddy all Flags. That. And uh, now, whenever I find, like, random people, I always make sure to get those friends. Because right. the more friends you get, you know, the more perks you get. Yeah. And, and then uh, uh, it's also important to do the side missions, too. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you do the side missions, that'll give you the characters that you can summon in to help you yeah. in the battle. I used uh, you, the slave. Did you do the one to, uh, where, where you go to, like, the, the, t- the Chinese tower or whatever? Yeah, the Peace Palace or whatever. And you, yeah. and you, and you fight, like, Genghis Khan. The Mongolian all the children. Mongor- yeah. yeah, the Mongolians. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. The city Walk. Yeah. yeah. Right next <laughs> that, door to it. Yeah. That's from that class episode when yep. Shitty Walk was fight, uh, fighting the... Uh, the Japanese He's, guy yeah. or whatever. God, that was I a classic that episode, after, episode, man. That's one thing about that game. After playing some parts of it, I've gone back and watched the episodes just to, you know. Dude, they're all, it's like a big, like. It is. You continuous know, interactive episode. It's awesome, man. I've, I've watched, I, I actually haven't played it, but I've watched a lot of Twitch people playing yeah. it. And, I, cause and the humor in it, it's just, I mean, it's great. It's funny. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, that, that. One night, I think it's the second day, when you go to sleep, you go to bed, you wake up, and there's like some miniature gnomes trying to steal your underpants. Yeah, I think I'm getting to and that. They the underpants sh- gnomes. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's classic. They, they end up shrinking you down to their size, and you <laughs> got to follow them into like a mouse hole in the wall, and then you end up in your parents' bedroom, and they're like doing it doggy style, <laughs> and you've got to get to this one gnome so he can bring you back to full size, and he's up on your parents' bed, like right underneath them while they're doing it, and you go up there, <laughs> and you end up fighting him, like right underneath your parents' miniature while they're doing it doggy style, giants right on top of you <laughs> and then you're in the middle of like the battle and that gnome is like low bridge and then like yeah. your father's giant nutsack comes <laughs> towards you and you gotta just dive out of the way at the last second the game's crazy I heard yeah. Lemmy Winks is Lemmy Winks in it too and cause I saw this thing where Lem- they were fighting like Lemmy Winks and it had the song like Lemmy Winks from the show on I, there playing in the background I haven't seen it yet but there is, I'm sure there is. They have yeah. every other thing in there. Yeah. yeah. Cause I was looking for Chef, awesome. but Chef's in there. But if you go into like buildings, like the PTA meeting, oh. they'll have like his music playing in the background. You know, it's just it was cool just to actually. One of the cool you things know. I notice is when you load up the game and it starts you playing, it does that song like, you know, like oh, at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the cool little touches like that. It is. I mean, it's and plus just the like I said earlier. I mean the. The humor when you select your characters, you know, the classes you want to be. There's a Jew, it's a thief. You know, and I was watching this one guy play online. He chose, he changed the color of his character to black, and he chose thief again. And Cartman was like, that doesn't surprise me. And before he played, he was a white guy and picked thief, and he said something completely different. So it's funny <laughs> that, you know, they do all that well, stuff. Well, it, it's um, one of the things that I did hear about the game that uh, is kind of, it doesn't matter which class you pick. You can use all the weapons. Yeah, There's yeah. not much of a variation as far as the class types. I think it really comes down to the like classes. Your magic. Yeah, just kind of uh, changes the different special abilities that yeah. you have. But yeah, I mean, all the weapons. That's another thing. Like, all the items you get, they're pretty cool. They're pretty, you know, imaginative when it comes down to it. Oh yeah. You know, but uh, but I mean, the game's hard. Man, bear, pig, coin. Yeah, and uh, but I mean, you never feel like. It's on, you know, beatable, unless yeah. you just don't keep, you know, you get new weapons and equipment all the time, so you constantly have to stay on top of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or else you're just, you know, get laid to waste. Yeah, and then you're like, man, what's going on? And then you realize you've picked up something that's like 10 levels ahead of where you are, and you, yeah. should, and you should have equipped that a long, a long time, time ago. ago. And they have, like, those different, uh, like, strap-ons for your weapons that give you, like, you know, added... Boost. And it's crazy because uh, you can actually go to Canada, and Canada yeah. is a completely different art style. It's like 8-bit Nintendo. Like Terrence and Philip. Yeah. When well, you, I just got to the gate, and it was, you know, the, the Mountie there. 
And uh, I don't know what you have to do to get in there, but... Uh, do they all have it's, the... It's part of the main story. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, Cartman will send you there later. Do they all have the cut and half yeah. heads yeah, that, that, that wobble? Yeah, yeah, yeah like and then that. they all... It, it, are they all like the stick figures, just yeah. like well, Terrence and Phillip? the one I saw. I'm sure they'll have it all they like are. that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like Terrence and Phillip? That's yeah. tight. Because Ike is actually Canadian. Mm. Uh, what's his favorite? Um, uh, Was gosh. it Kyle's brother? Kyle. Kyle's brother, yeah, yeah. Kyle's brother. And he has the, the little mount, uh, mounty head or whatever. Tilting head, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, uh, I think uh, as a cartoony RPG, probably four and a half rags. Easily, as yeah. a As a South Park game, five rags. Yeah, that's the first one, good one ever. Yeah. I, mean, I can yeah. know of, at least, yeah. And so, an actual game, not some tower defense or, you know. And then, uh, so, you've been playing a lot of five raggers lately. Takedown Red Saber, I hear that one, is like an all, ultimate all-time classic. Tell never. us about that. That game... <laughs> Is it tries so hard to be like Rainbow Six that it just falls in every direction? Like I just don't understand how it got released. I mean, if you read the review on the website, you'll see the gist of it. But it's just really broken. You can control your teammates, but they only have like four options, and most of the time they're just standing there looking at a wall or a corner. Right. You do all the work basically. So tell us about the funny stuff that you were telling me. Man, well, first level. On top of the roof. So your extraction, you know, your entry point. Right. And there's a doorway. Yeah. So you automatically go towards the doorway. Of course. And you're thinking, it's a stealth fight and a shooter, so I'm going to be sneaky about it. So I'm, like, literally, like, push the control stick enough, you know, just to, like, walk. And as soon as I get to the doorway, this dude, like, pops his head around the corner, turns around, he's like, they're here! <laughs> like, instantly. I don't know how it happened, so I, you know, restarted it. Went all the way around so that I would come up on the wall so there's no way he could see me. As soon as I get in that doorway, there's like two guys already like looking at me. Weapons aimed. Already already opened fire before you even turned the corner. I mean, just about. They were trigger happy. And then the other time, finally, I was just like, you know what, screw it. I went to the doorway, shot, <laughs> backed up, and then like one came. And then the other one said, they're here. Then the other one came. I just mowed them down. They just kept coming. Eventually to the point where like the whole level... On that floor was gone. There was no one left. <laughs> right. Because they all ran upstairs. And then, I mean, there's no objection markers to tell you where to go unless you're literally right in the room. There's no map, really, you can use besides the briefing before the mission actually starts. Right, right. So but, you got to pay, pay close attention to that briefing. I mean, yeah, but I don't think it really did any good. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, it's just very bland. Everything looks the same. You could get turned around in there, no problem. But, I mean, online's different, though, when you play online. It's more of a serious group. If you don't have a mic and you're not willing to talk, then they'll just kick you out. Right. The hell out of here. And pretty much, yeah. yeah. But then when you do play... That's how people, it was in games like Left 4 Dead or whatever. If you joined yeah. in and you didn't have your mic plugged in, you were going to get kicked out. out. Yeah. But uh, even then, I joined one match. This guy just straight turned around and shot me. So I guess I wasn't welcomed in the match. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. <laughs> But, like, uh, man, this guy sucks. Let's get, <laughs> let's get rid of him before he ruins it for everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I mean, it, it's it's really like a watered-down Rainbow Six. All the options that you think you could have from that game, imagine right. maybe half and not the cool ones. Right. So, I mean... And it it is, what, a $10 game? 15 Yeah. I think, I think it's 10 10 so... Maybe 15 They fake. And so, <laughs> with, with that in mind, that it's a $10 game... What are you thinking, frag wise, for that piece? Five? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll be generous and give it a three. Oh, that does sound generous. <laughs> Just for the fact that when you do actually get a game going online with like people that are actually willing to talk and like not be a holes and just rush to the objective, it, it, you know, it's not a bad game, but it's not right. something you've already played before. You know, I mean, for sure, do yourself a favor and spend that ten bucks and get like Rainbow Six. Okay, all right, and so then, in a spoiler-free way... Oh, Walking Dead episode Walking 2. Walking Dead episode 2, which I'm thinking that one probably is close to a 5, right? Yeah, that's, I'm going to give that a 4.5, because nice. uh, the story is just so good in it. When you start out, I mean, the continuation from the last episode to this episode, everything's pretty much moving. Your characters, everything like that. Better than episode 1? Yeah, I'd say so, just for the fact that, you know... You, uh, more action? Not as much action. Maybe maybe in a sense of dealing with other people right. socially. Um, there is some action, but it happens towards the end. And even then, it's... I mean, so maybe it's kind of the decisions that you're making in episode two. They're going to 
you felt more like they carried weight. Yeah. Whereas in episode one, it kind of felt like it could go either way, regardless. Yeah, of Yeah, like said. in episode one, you were just kind of getting the foundation set, and then now, and the choices you make in episode two are really going to change. Like right. I think after this episode, either you did this, it's going to go somewhere completely different. If you did this, it's going to go another di- you know direction. I cannot wait for Telltale's Game of Thrones game. That's going to be fun too. Or that Borderlands. Yeah, one. yeah the, but that's actually the one I'm looking forward to. The Borderlands. I know one. Def is really looking forward. to Oh, it. he's going to be all over that. Yes, he is. He's probably going to take a few days off work. <laughs> Played through that all one day. Dude, he's going to wet himself. His phoenix will be rising. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it's it's uh, it's definitely a good game. Um, the storytelling, I mean, the, the gameplay is still the same. But like I said, it's just a story and the interaction with the people. And you know, even during the game itself, there were some choices that you made at the very beginning. That halfway through the end of the episode, you realize you probably shouldn't have done that or gone about it a different way. Yeah, that's how Walking Dead is, man. Yeah. Uh, and I don't you're even, like, damn it, I want to start all over and yeah. just make that other decision. It's funny because I've seen some people play online where they like pause it. Whenever a choice comes up, that's what I do with the guide. Well, you have button. to, yeah. yeah, you press the guide button in yeah. the middle. Yeah, I don't do that at all though because I, I don't know. I just rather do it all on the whim. You know, that way it's like I don't have time to really dwell. This dude's being attacked. I'm not going to hit the guide button in real life. I'm like, hold on, hold let on. me think about this. Yeah, but uh, I can't wait for the third episode. It's definitely going to be tight. Yeah, it is. But yeah, so four and a half for that. Mm-hmm. Awesome possum. Uh, and J. Ray just got finished with another five fragger. We're full of those today. <laughs> thief, thief. Yeah, hardly a five fragger, but uh, yeah, thief. Uh, again, you know, you can check the written review up on the site for the full details of it. But um, it's okay. You know, it's not something that everybody is gonna like, but it is something that can be enjoyable if you enjoy stealth games. Mm -hmm. If you like playing stealth games and you like first person sneakers in general, you will like, you know, you'll, you'll like thief. Uh, the only problem, the problem with it though, is the combat is so awful that they, they boast this this way to this, this very, is it just badly done or is it generic? Generic. Because you you only have your blackjack. Unlike previous thief Um, games, you don't have a sword. Yeah. So you, there's one button, Right. RB and that just right bumper for those and left bumper dodges. That's it. So it just hit, get hit, hit, get hit, hit. Hmm. Every sounds time. like fun. That, yeah, Jeez. that's it. So they boast this like uh, multiple ways to play. In fact, they even specify which way you play at the end of every mission. Uh, but there's only one way to play, and that's as stealth not getting yeah. caught using your arrows. And when you play it that way, the game actually kind of shines in its own way because it does have a lot of options as far as various arrow types, ways to stay hidden in the shadows, yeah. taking out la- lights and stuff. There's lots of cool puzzles in the game. I mean, it does have some good elements to it, but the map is awful. Mm. Awful. And then it's this big city that's broken up into sections. Oh. And every time you go to another section, there is a loading screen of at least 30 seconds, sometimes a minute. And it just takes wow. away from the flow of the game so much. Also, every time you go into a building, not through the front door, which you never want to go in the front door, you have yeah. to open up windows or so something. So is it like Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem Forever long loading screens? Yeah, or not it, quite it's, that clo- bad? it's close. It's close. They're long. Long. It's not quite as bad, but it's close. But every time you go into a window, you have to tap X. And that takes forever. You feel like you're tapping X forever. And man, when you're going through so many windows, it just gets tiresome. Yeah. You know, but, um, and finding your way around is kind of a mess. But upgrading is good. You know, the story isn't the best either. It's mostly thrives on its stealth gameplay. Yeah. and, and, And it works for that. But, uh, yeah, to, to, to find out more about it, you know, I won't go into all of it. I've already wrote about all of it. You can check it out on FragTagRadio.com. But I, I would say three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. Well, not bad. Yeah. All right. So um, that is the reviews. With that, moving on into the news. Um, Sony Gaff, a.k.a. Neo Gaff, was uh, putting up some rumors uh, recently that uh, Microsoft wasn't going to allow the Xbox One controller to support PC. Of course, that's 100% wrong, as most things are that come on Sony Gaff related to Xbox. So, mm. um, and that and that's confirmed by Microsoft themselves. They will be supporting Xbox One controllers for PC, uh, and that'll be coming sometime this year. Uh, next, and then speaking of Sony, uh, on the good side, Sony has announced a uh, a new next gen disc format that's actually supposed to hold up, you know, up to a terabyte of data, which is uh, what like. 
ten times what Blu-rays hold. Yeah. So they'd be inventing the discs, man. Yeah. They invented the Blu-ray. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's actually it's uh, a joint venture between them and Panasonic. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, working together on this. That sounds like a Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so uh, that'll be coming next year, 2015. Uh, when it first comes out, it'll just be used for kind of storage, mm -hmm. and then over time they'll try and adopt it and make it the new standard over Blu-ray. Yeah. Uh, Mad Cats launching uh, their first uh, official Xbox One Triton headset this summer. Uh, so you got that look to look, look forward to if you're a Triton fan. Jay Ray, you're a Triton fan, aren't you? No, no. I had a pair of Tritons that I liked, but. Uh... Ever not, since I went to Turtle, not a fan. Ever since I went to Turtle Beach, I liked the Turtle Beach is much better because I had the PX. I had a pair of Tritons and then I went to the PX fives. And after I went to the PX fives, I was sold on Turtle Beach. Never had to go back. Never. I feel you there. I'm saying my Turtle Beach all the way. All right. Uh, Watch Dogs closed beta appeared briefly on Xbox Live on Xbox One, and uh, it was spotted by some people. They took some screenshots, put it up, and then it was quickly, you know, taken down. So, hmm. but uh, I think that pretty much confirms there is a Watch Dogs beta going on out yeah. there somewhere. <coughs> if you're in it, you know, we'd like to hear from you. So, <laughs> uh, Phil Spencer, Games with Gold is going to feel more true to what consumers want here in the near future. Thank God. Uh, a lot of people have been, you know, criticizing Games with Gold, <laughs> saying, you know, that a lot of the yeah. games are super old. Well, not only yeah. that, but there's just one thing I commend Sony on is if you have a PlayStation 4 and you have PlayStation Plus right now, you have like five free games yeah, yeah. or six free games already. And a lot of them are really good games. I know. We haven't gotten anything on Xbox One. Nothing noteworthy. No, but, uh, Games for Gold is coming to Xbox One this year. Yeah, I know. I know. And, what uh, it is, but... In this same article, Phil Spencer pointed out, and it's the same thing I've been pointing out to people, is that the difference between Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus is with Games with Gold, you actually get your game to keep regardless of whether your subscription lapses or oh, not. Oh, yeah. With PlayStation Plus, you're you're essentially paying for an extended rental. Well, so uh, Sony that's does. True. Sony doesn't have to pay these companies as much money to get their games on PlayStation Plus because they're not really giving it away. Right, yeah. They're just letting them rent it for a That's true, time. but when you have to have PlayStation Plus to play online games on Sony, you're almost always going to have PlayStation Plus anyways. Yeah. And if you haven't beaten the game by the time you get rid of your PlayStation Plus, then you never really wanted it to begin with. So, you know, that's how... I, that's kind of how I feel about it, but I mean. Well, I, I think I think uh, the big concern there would be like a lot of people, uh, you know, like maybe if they forgot and their subscription accidentally, accidentally, accidentally lapses yeah. and they lose their whole instant collection that they've been building up over all this time just because they forgot to make the payment a day late or yeah. whatever. You know, that I, I can see where that that, that could well, be. Well, I don't really think that's the case though, because you still download them on your hard drive and they're still there. And as long as it checks you in as a PlayStation Plus member when you go to load it up. Should be fine. No, no, no. If your subscription lapses and then you resubscribe again, even if the game's on your hard drive, you've you you've 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 essentially lapsed and then restarted. So even though the games are on your hard drive, but you won't be able to access them. Hmm. I didn't. I, I didn't know that. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. That's I, I don't. I, yeah. I don't think that's because when my roommate got his PlayStation, he had a 360, and he had sold his PlayStation 3. But he's had all his games since he re since he entered the little code that came with it. He's had all his games there, so that can't be the case. That's that's the way that I was reading about it um, just just yesterday. Actually, in, in this article, they were breaking it down the difference between the two uh, services. Yeah, that doesn't so sound right. I have to check into that. What's up? So I wonder if that's a new thing or that's old. Because when I had my PS3 back in the day, I sold it. I only had a one month subscription. Then I got my PS3. Recently, they came with a free year, and I still had everything since I downloaded it yeah, again. Yeah, that's that's what I thought too. I thought the same thing. I don't know. Maybe they just made maybe a mistake with that. It. Yeah, or maybe they changed that. I don't know. Hmm. Who PS4 knows? Series. Have to do some research. Um, next on the list, uh, DirectX 12 is supposed to be uh, revealed at uh, GDC this year, uh, which will not only include uh, some DirectX improvements for Windows PC, but also Xbox One as well. So uh, I'm hoping that'll be uh, some stuff to deal with the ES RAM so that developers can more e easily utilize uh, the ES RAM that uh, is being used in the Xbox One and uh, get those resolutions straight so people can stop talking about it. Well, yeah. Uh, Defense Grid 2 coming to Xbox One in, uh, this year. Uh, uh, Defense Grid uh, was a really popular game on 360 when it yeah. first came out, and that was actually one of the, one of the games with gold, gold games. Yeah, it was. Uh, Early on. I yeah, think. early was one of the first free games with gold games. 
Uh, and then J. Ray looking forward to RBI Baseball 14 coming out on April 10th. Yeah, but that's for the the last generation, and they were supposedly making one for this generation, but they, we haven't heard a word on a release date or anything for the next for Xbox One and PS4. So unless it's on next gen, you're not messing with it. No, I'm not because if I'm going to get a last gen game, you know, a baseball game, I would just get the show. You know, I want a next gen game, which I'm going to get to show anyway on PS4, so it really doesn't matter until I see something on this. But it scares me because RBI hasn't, like you were mentioning, we haven't even seen a screenshot. Yeah, and the game yeah. comes out in less well, than a month. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to be unfortunate if it comes out and it does suck because RBI Baseball was a great game back in the day. Yeah, it was, but this is a whole new studio. A whole, you know, it, they're essentially just taking the name yeah. and they, they have no groundwork laid because it's such an old game. So. I really, really, really want there to be a good baseball game on the market for Xbox. I really do. And even if it's halfway decent, because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be essentially NBA Live or Elite trying to catch up to, to NBA 2K. It's not going to happen. But they could at least come out with a halfway decent one. Because right now nobody has any options on Xbox to play a baseball game. You know, yeah. so they really need to come. They, they've got and to- it is possible to catch up and even move ahead. I mean, I think uh, 2K has done that with NBA because for, for a long time, NBA well, Live yeah. was the best basketball game. Sure, but th- what I mean by that is they were all NBA Live and NBA 2K were always there. NBA Live didn't. I mean, NBA 2K didn't take a several year hiatus and then come back and catch at NBA Live. They right. just essentially built on what they had and made it better. I feel like once you that you take this time off and don't have anything, it, it's a long, long road. Not to say it can't be done, but it's a long, long road, especially with a game as great as the show. I mean, the show drops nine nine out of tens every year when it comes out. Um, you know, nine and a half. So, I mean, it's it's a stellar. It's the NBA 2K of the baseball world. The only difference is. You know they don't have any competition. It sucks. I want I want more than anybody for this game to be good. I just don't think it will be. Well, I guess we'll be finding out on April tenth on three sixty and PS three. Yeah, I wonder uh, when we'll find out on next gen. Maybe never. Maybe yeah. no. They're supposedly making it. I mean, maybe a, RBI Baseball fifteen. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> but uh, uh, Castlevania: Lords of Shadow two DLC confirmed. As we all knew, there would be a DLC, yeah. but it's actually going to let you play as Alucard, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Throwback. Maybe be a saving grace for a game that's been getting critically panned. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, Watch Dogs. Speaking of that game, official release date May twenty seventh. As long as it doesn't get delayed yeah, this time, somebody needs to that. tell GameStop that because I was in there yesterday and they had June thirtieth on everything. The poster, uh, like the little posters and everything. Oh. And I told the guy, I was like, you know that release date's wrong. He was like, well, that's the release date we've been sent by Ubisoft. And I was like, well, it's not right. <laughs> I was like uh-huh. trying to, and he, because he, he was telling, he, it started because he asked me, he was like, would you like to pre-order Watch Dogs? And I was like, no, I was like, speaking of which, you know, you guys got June 30th up there and said 630. And he said, uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it comes out the end of May. And he was like, no, you're wrong about that. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know where you guys got this release date from, unless yeah. it's been delayed secretively, and, and I don't know about it. Yes. Well, GameStop has a long history of effing up, so. Yeah, yeah. like selling the official Xbox stereo headset for eighty nine ninety nine when you can find it for seventy nine ninety nine. Everywhere, online. and they were selling it for a hundred dollars up until the day Titanfall came out. It's crazy. They were selling it for a straight one zero zero a hundred dollars, and then at the midnight release for Titanfall, I watched the guy come uh-huh. out there and change the stickers from a hundred dollars to eighty nine ninety nine. It's seventy nine ninety nine everywhere online. Yeah, everywhere, Amazon, everywhere. Yeah, you're like we're GameStop, baby. People will pay what we yeah, want them to pay. Exactly. <laughs> Just like when uh, Vita had that Assassin's Creed uh, Liberation bundle, and it was on sale for like, I don't even remember what the price was on Amazon, um, and Best Buy, and everywhere, but GameStop didn't have it on sale, and it was like $70 more expensive in wow. the store at GameStop. I was trying to explain to the guy, the manager, like, yo, you guys aren't going to sell any of these, no. you know, but you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. Uh, so, and... um. As as you'll probably know, they've got this Xbox One bundle where you buy the console and get Titanfall free mm-hmm. with it. Well, now they've also got the Forza 5 bundle. You can buy the console and get Forza 5 free with it, too. So if you're not a, a shooting guy, you can uh, alternatively get the, the one of the best racing games ever made. Yeah, hands down. With it. So uh, both of those are really great deals, depending on your preference. Yeah. Um, Guacamole, Super Turbo. Guacamole. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Turbo <laughs> Super Turbo Championship <laughs> Edition. Uh, awesome game. Yeah, you've played it. So tell us about it. What exactly is it? 
Guacamelee is a goofy uh, platformer brawler, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's really, really goofy and funny, and uh, that's essentially the gist of it. Um, almost like a Rayman-ish, but a little bit wackier. You know what I mean? So what what what's good about it? What makes it awesome? It's very creative. A lot of the same things that make a Rayman type, you know, very colorful, very creative, very interesting. Some some puzzle elements, some Metroid elements. I mean, it's just I don't know. It's just original. You have to play it. It's yeah. it, it's so hilarious when you play it. You just laugh. Like it, it, it's very unique and creative. Okay. You know, it, it's just a it's a great indie game. So this is the Super Turbo Championship Edition. Uh, we'll have all the DLC from previous versions, including the PC version, as well as some more and new levels and bosses. So, and that'll become an Xbox One and 360, so if you're interested, you'll be hitting that up later on this year. Uh, Peggle 2 coming to Xbox 360 on May 7th. About time. Kind Peggle 2. That, yeah. Peggle 2! Yeah. Uh, and then it'll come to other platforms uh, sometime toward the end of this year or early next year. Uh, let's see. Uh, my... Obviously, they're the Halo plans for E3 have been confirmed. Yeah, and, and there's been a lot of rumors now, and... and I, I hope this isn't the case, but the people are saying that the Halo that will come out this year will be Halo 2 Anniversary. Right. Oh, yeah, I hope it's that. Halo 5 so bad. Yeah. I want Halo 5. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I I hope so. But I could definitely see it being Halo 2 Anniversary and then wait until the following Christmas yeah. to do Halo. I think it probably will. But, man, because you notice they were very specific when they showed that Halo trailer yeah. about not calling it Halo 5. Yeah. Exactly. Right, but yeah. they but but they also insinuated that's what you would be playing, and then that our adventure would begin on Xbox One this year. So maybe it's the anniversary edition, but also has like a level from the new one, or yeah, maybe or maybe like a beta access. Yeah, maybe. something like that. I don't know. I just hope it's Halo Five so bad, but I could see Me it. Too. I mean, Destiny's coming out, and. I could totally well, I see mean, three four three. Bungie's not doing Microsoft any favors these days, so I'm sure they wouldn't have no problem releasing against Destiny. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. I could totally see three four three wanting to drop Halo Five yeah. against Bungie's Destiny. Yeah. I could see that, you know. But, yeah. but I mean, then again, it is a multi-platform game, and it will be on their console, even though the Xbox True. is getting the short end of the stick when it comes. It's to still going to compete directly with that game, yeah. though. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, Xbox Live support possibly coming to Android and iOS. Now, we've already kind of seen this. Uh, if you've got an Android phone, you can download uh, Wordament, uh, which is a Windows phone, Windows 8 game, and actually get achievements on your Android phone. Uh, that was kind of opening the gates, you know, because you're kind of testing the waters, and word is that, you know, things have been working out with that well, and they're going to start bringing other uh, Xbox-branded games to, uh, to Android and iOS, which I think is pretty cool because... Uh, Kind of cool in a way uh, for me, but also kind of not cool for Microsoft because I've been thinking about getting a Windows phone, and the whole reason I've been wanting to get one is so I could play Xbox branded games and get achievements. But uh, come on, (laughs) such a hater. Dishonored two to be revealed at E three in 2014. Concept logo and art points. Yeah, so um, I could see that happening. Yeah, I could too, and I hope it happens. Because it's been what? How long since the product? Two years. Well, maybe even a little over, huh? I don't know if it's been over. I think it's been about two years. So, yeah. yeah, maybe a little under. No, it's been about At two least years. At least two years because it came out the last, last year, the year before. The yeah, last it was, time I it talked was, to Derek, and I haven't talked to Derek in a little. It was long about. Time. It was not this past September, but the September before. before that. Yeah, I believe so. About so, yeah, yeah a, a, a little under two years. Um, but an awesome game, awesome game, Dishonored. Mass Effect Trilogy, and I remember you were talking about this recently, Jay, yeah. right, where you saw that... Um, a remastered version coming to Xbox One. What are you... Uh, do you think that's actually possible? Or, do you think that, or, or is that just kind of talk? Well, I, I mean, I will say that, you know when they came out with the Mass Effect 2 for, um, for uh, PlayStation 3? Mm-hmm. When they did that, they ran it on the, place, the, the Mass Effect 3 engine... And released it, so it was like a remastered version of Mass Effect Two for PS3, and uh, you know that was pretty essentially the same game, but they did it right before Mass Effect Three came out. So I could see with Mass Effect right probably going to be unveiled here soon after Dragon Age comes out. Yeah. I could see that coming out to kind of catch everybody up on the story before the new Mass Effect comes out. I I'd buy it. I would too. 
Um, I'd love to have the Mass Effect trilogy on my Xbox One. You yeah. know what I really want on my Xbox One is Grand Theft Auto Five. Me too. Yeah. Because too. Um, you know I would love to be playing Grand Theft Auto Five right now. I just never feel like powering on my 360. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, man, we were talking about that the other day. We would be playing Grand Theft Auto a lot more, or essentially, period. If yeah, it was I'd on, play, I'd be playing it probably daily. Yeah, it sucks. It'd, it'd be like Grand Theft Auto and Titanfall back and forth between those two. I, I think it'll happen. I just don't know what they're waiting on. Maybe E three. Maybe. It sucks though because it's it's a perfect opportunity to cash in some more sales. Yeah, and I mean, tons of people. I mean, like us who already bought the game for three sixty would totally buy it again. We'll rebuy it, yeah. <laughs> and they'd essentially sell us the same product twice. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there's money to be made there. I mean, I'm sure they'd probably they 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 probably sell damn near as many copies for the next gen as they did for because I'm, I'm sure especially like, now that Titanfall has gotten Xbox Ones in a lot of people's hands, right? And you know the fact that there aren't a lot of games out on the next gen consoles yet would make people even more next gen owners Hell, even more likely to buy it. How many people bought the definitive right? edition of Tomb Raider? Because I could tell you right now, I've seen. At yeah. least ten people on my friends list playing it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So Me it, too. And while that game was good, it wasn't as good as Grand Theft Auto Five. No. Didn't sell near as many as and, and matter of fact, I soon after it came out, Square was disappointed with it with, with the initial sales of that game. What a great what a game it was though. It was yeah, a hell of a except game. for the multiplayer, which yeah, was the horrible. multiplayer wasn't very good. But I think we all kinda knew it wasn't gonna be yeah. going on. Uh, multiplayer, big focus for Halo on Xbox One. No way. No surprise there. No way. Multi- uh, Halo on Xbox uh, One is going to have multiplayer? Here's uh, something I was really interested Holy in. Holy crap. My, uh, Microsoft considering a free version of Windows 8.1 and and uh, future Windows, which uh, I think they need to do, I think they should do, to compete with things like Android, where because you, you've, got, you've got Chromebooks coming out now, which is, you know, uh, and, you know, that operating... Software is available for free for anybody who wants to make a laptop and put that on there. I think Microsoft needs to take that same step, you know, and uh, and make their money back the same way Google does. Otherwise, risk losing a lot of market share because a lot of people are going to start moving over to uh, to uh, you know Android and uh, the Chrome operating software because they can make laptops with that for free and they don't have to pay for it. Hey, uh, KJ, guess what? Halo on Xbox One is gonna have multiplayer. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> are you surprised like we are? <laughs> Sounds kind of out of the question to me. But... Yeah. <laughs> Master Chief's always been a solo guy. Multiplayer's never been his thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Square Enix confirms 1080p for a murdered soul suspect. I'm looking forward to this game. This game looks interesting. On both yeah. Xbox One and PS4. Surprise, surprise. 1080p on Xbox One. Game oh. looks interesting. Interesting. Um, and then uh, a lot of CEOs stepping down. Well, not exactly CEOs. Uh, Mark Witten over at Xbox mm-hmm. just stepped down. Yeah. He's about to go work for uh, Sonos, the uh, audio company. I think so, yeah. Uh, and now Jack Jack Trenton, which is an even bigger. I mean, I think that, that's, that I actually feel like this is a loss for Sony because uh, Jack, Jack Trenton was like the main guy. Like when I thought of Sony, I thought of Jack Trey. Yeah, especially lately here with the PS4's launch, he was heavily involved with that. Yeah. You know, he was kind of the face of that. He was, and like, I mean, granted, they had a couple people who come on stage and talk other than him. They had, of course, uh, Mark Kearney, and uh, that, that, who's that other guy with the mustache and the beard? He looks like a pedophile. Be coming on the stage. Man. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. <laughs> Him and Jack Trenton held up the PS4 together on stage. Oh, oh, gosh. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, he does. I can't uh, I can't think of his name. I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah. You know, uh, all those guys, you know, they're decent on stage or whatever, but they're actually kind of boring, just like how Don Matrick was for Xbox when he came yeah. on stage to talk. Jack Trenton actually, actually brought some life to the stage. He was actually fairly entertaining to watch. You know, and uh, while, while Mark Kearney is a really smart guy, and I think he's done a great job with architecture PS4, he's not very fun to listen to. No, Mark Cerny yeah. actually sounds a little bit uh, homosexual when he yeah, talks and stuff. Not bit. that that's a bad thing or anything, but you know, it's just like <laughs> uh, it, it, it's just he doesn't really come across as like an exciting person. Right. I don't know. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so pretty much uh, Jack Trent's contract ran out, and he just decided not to renew it, or Sony decided not to renew it. 
no word on exactly what happened there. They're not talking. Jack Trenton has just pretty much said uh, he's enjoyed his time, wishes him the best, and moving on. They caught him banging his assistant. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they walked in. and I bet she was hot, too. Oh. Probably not. Well, she, she, was was only, she was only 17. Oh, whoa. <laughs> no, I'm just we, kidding. We, we can't be going there. I have man. no idea. <laughs> we can't be going there. <laughs> We didn't. Jack Tretton did. That is off, that is off <laughs> limits, man. What a, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Oh, man. There's going to be rumors on Sony Gaff <laughs> about... Sony Gaff's going to be talking about... <laughs> Jack Tretton caught with 17-year-old woman. Girl. Yeah, we don't, we, we don't want those Sony Gaff guys going to work. They will hit back, and they will hit back hard with a bunch of false, horrible Xbox news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... Xbox One closing the monthly uh, sales gap on PS4. Uh, a very narrow margin between um, Xbox One sold over 90% of what the PS4 did this month, which is great considering yeah. how it went last month. You know, uh, PS4 outsold 2 to 1 last month. Um, Titanfall is only going to increase that. Yeah, yeah that's I, definitely I think, uh, yeah, they might even take take a small lead this month for Titanfall. Oh, yeah, yeah with, with Titanfall coming out, I, I, I kind of felt like this was their time to to step up and close the gap, yeah. you know, and uh, they because I we knew that. I'm actually surprised because I felt like Xbox had the stronger launch lineup, but they just had a long, 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 long road to recovery from all the negative press that they yeah. got. Yeah. And it plus the price point, plus the price yeah. price point, which was the other major issue. And uh, you know, I feel like they're they're on the road back, and it's going to be a tight. I think they're going to be neck and neck for a long time because Sony's got Infamous coming out, and a lot of Sony hardcore fans that have PS3s yeah. that are have waited. Have that game they've been waiting for. You know yeah. what I mean? So you're going to see a lot of PS3 guys adopt PS4s now. So, you know, probably not as much as guys that are buying buying Titanfall because Infamous isn't really as mainstream as Titanfall is. Yeah. But I feel like it's just going to be a neck and neck battle for a long time, you know? Yeah. Unlike last generation where 360 had a clear advantage or the generation before yeah. where PlayStation 2 had a gen- yeah. clear advantage, you know what I mean? I think this is the first life cycle we're just going to see it right there both yeah, of them which is the only good news for us yeah that's true yeah because they're going to be constantly battling mm-hmm. each other yep. and giving out good deals and making good games that's right how about that Wii mm. <laughs> the Wii U yeah I, I was actually reading where the Wii sales sales went up, up in Japan a little oh, bit you'll be happy to hear alright <laughs> thank goodness it's about time you'll be happy to hear you can strive for the little guy yeah. And that, and, and uh, that uh, that Donkey Kong Deep Freeze is on the market, so whoop, whoop. I've heard that's Donkey a good Kong game. Deep Freeze. <laughs> that deep Freeze. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that what it's called for real? I don't know. I, I think so. Like, like tropical, tropical, yeah, yeah. tropical yeah. Tro- Freeze. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Deep Freeze. <laughs> deep Freeze. <laughs> that Donkey Kong Blizzard Beach. They need to, <laughs> needs to take the Wii U and throw that thing into a deep freeze and never look back. <laughs> oh, man. I want to see, I've said it numerous times, but I want to see in, in five, six, seven, ten years um, that Nintendo becomes like Sega and publishes their games on our other platforms yeah. like Xbox One and Sony. And I, I know we're a Well, Nintendo's way. slowly getting that way. I think like Super Smash Brothers is like on Steam now. Mm-hmm. And like you know, they're slowly. I think we're we're a long way away from that because they're not going to give up. Yeah. They, especially with their they're not they're not giving up. Their handheld market's doing so well yeah. that they're going to continue to, you know, do what they're doing. Yeah, but they're, hopefully the next system will be. Hopefully the next system crash and burns just like the Wii U, so that we get some <laughs> games on on Xbox One. <laughs> no, but I, I mean I'm rooting for Nintendo. I've always liked Nintendo, you know. So uh, though I would like to have Link on Xbox One. Yeah, yeah I know nice. that would. You know, once every 22 years we could get a Zelda. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, and before maybe, they got maybe well, even a new Metroid. You know, yeah. they'll they'll announce Zelda for Xbox One before who the, the company that's even making it even knows. knows yeah, <laughs> like surprise, Star Fox. I'd be all over it. Uh, yeah, and Zelda's know. coming to Xbox One. It is. <laughs> <That's a deal. laughs> um, so Skype uh, Xbox One update improves chat filtering and knocks out some bugs. So doesn't you, allow it to be snapped. Uh, no, 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 not yet. I don't know what's holding them back on that. Because I'm, to me, I mean, instead of uh, thwarting bugs and whatever, I'd rather, I'd rather just had it snappable and been a little buggy. If you can broadcast your face on Twitch while you're playing a game, snapped. You certainly can snap to, uh, Skype. Oh yeah, uh, no doubt in my mind. Get it together. Get it together. Although, 
Microsoft. I don't know how I don't know how much you've used the Twitch uh, app on your Xbox One so far, but it's buggy. Uh, every time I try and use the Connect with it and have it showing me sitting in the chair playing the game, after about ten minutes of play, the Connect picture freezes. Really? And it's a frozen picture of me sitting in the chair while the gameplay still continues. It's buggy. It, it's real buggy. I tried to broadcast while we were playing Titanfall last night, and it came up, and it just showed the Twitch logo for about 20 minutes, but I was in the middle of a game, so I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Xbox on Snap, Xbox on Snap, Xbox fucking on Snap! Yeah. <laughs> what can you do, you know? You can sit there and look at a pink logo. Talk about a logo. Talk yeah. about talk about an app that needs some improvements, some filtering, and bug thwarting. That's the one. But, yep. Yeah. Uh, so the next Xbox One update, uh, already in development, external uh, HDD support, and the return of friend notifications plan. And this is what I was t- talking to you about yesterday, Jay Ray. I knew, uh, yeah, I knew about this. I mean, I, I knew that there was something that they were talking about. It was just a bummer that it's not on it. So, uh, and then this is this is coming straight from Microsoft. We know external hard drive storage is a big one on the list. It's on our list too. We're working on that for a future update, and we'll keep you posted. We're also working on friends notification improvements and experimenting with how to make that better. Just as we do with Xbox 360, we'll be continuing with regular updates to Xbox One. Uh, some big, like the March update, and some will be smaller, big or small. We're committed to delivering continuous innovation through system updates, just like this one. And thanks for your feedback. Well, hopefully the May update will get some external hard drive support. That would be awesome. I mean, uh, you'd got me all excited when you said it was going to be in this update. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to have external hard drive support like in like a week. It's nothing like being excited. I love that. Yeah. I love being excited. <laughs> Put you in that deep freeze. Yeah. <laughs> and once you get in that deep freeze, there ain't no looking back. Mm-hmm. You know? Prepare for Titanfall. And so who's ready for some Forza in the deep south? Speaking of deep. The deep south. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take you down to the deep south. <laughs> oh gosh, what are we talking about? Um, <laughs> uh, concept art uh, for something called Forza Deep South has really? apparently appeared and then promptly disappeared uh, from the internet. Uh, the artwork was spotted by IGN. Uh, it uh, shows like uh, some some pieces of art, and one of them looks some like some pieces of art. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> down in the deep south, <laughs> one of them looks like a, a Forza car driving through the Louisiana Bayou down there in the deep south. I would love to see another Horizon because I'll tell you what, it's a good game, and we know that it was awesome. Loved it. Mm-hmm. And we know that there's two two teams working on Forza games now, so why not? Why not? Why not? I'm all over it. I'm all over it. I'm ready for the deep south. <laughs> I'm ready for the <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> Nothing I like better than some deep south. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Forza Horizon 2 would be uh, a happy thing. I like my games just like I like my whiskey. Deep south. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, comic, uh, Cosmic Star Heroin, Xbox One. Heroin? What? This is actually one of those, uh, ID at Xbox Heroine. indie games. Also coming to PS4, Vita, PC, Mac, Linux, my balls. It's coming out for everything. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a turn-based RPG, uh, you know, so, uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, new Xbox uh, One details for Below. I know, which is, I, I'm looking forward this, to this. This is the game I'm looking forward to. I know, to. this game's going to be dope. This is going to be the Zelda for Xbox Yeah, it's going to be like old school Zelda games, and that's exactly what it reminded me of, and I've been waiting for this one for a while, along with Child of Light. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more of Below quite soon, but not... You'll be seeing a lot more of Below? But not at GDC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll be seeing a lot of more, more of my Below quite soon. Down in the deep south. <laughs> Uh, he explained, blah, 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 a third post points to recently published interview. At Game like a Corner. bunch of 10-year-old children. A lot has changed, <laughs> but there's some worthwhile uh, sort of vague stuff. Interview includes thoughts from the studio, uh, relatively simple, yada, 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 persistent elements and multiplayer using a lot of features, etc., etc., etc. Might even have some drop-in, drop-out multiplayer um, so that could be interesting. Drop in, drop out multiplayer <laughs> down there in the deep south. Oh, I'm sorry. We're we're losing it over here. That's okay. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what happens. That's what happens in the deep south. You lose it. Oh man. Yeah, below. 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 <laughs> oh, what I meant to say is we are like a bunch of ten year old children. <laughs> <in here. laughs> Oh, I know. I, I, that's not what came out at all. 
man. We are like 10-year-old children in here. Been, uh... Not, I don't want to see 10-year-old children below. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> in the deep south. <laughs> in the deep south. We've been going all... Yeah, I mean, you've been, you've been talking about minors a lot. I, I don't know. Show. First there was that thing about Jack Trent with the 17-year-old girl, and now we're talking about 10-year-old children. Uh, I, I know. I'm starting uh, to wonder. I mean, I, <laughs> the listeners are probably starting to wonder, too, what's going on with this guy? Oh, man. Should we have him investigated? Or? <laughs> Maybe so. Gosh, after... I did not mean it to come out that way. <laughs> oh, anyways, Bound by Flame... It's coming out on uh, May 9th for Xbox 360. And uh, this is from uh, the same developers who did uh, that Mars Wars oh, game, uh, which is like a poor man's... Bio, or, uh, poor Ma- man's Mars Warlogs. Yeah, yeah, Mars yeah, Warlogs. Yeah. Uh, which, which is actually a pretty good game. Like, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of liked it. And this is supposed to be like a, a poor man's Skyrim. Hmm. Um, and from what I've seen, it looks pretty decent. They're just know? making poor man's games all over the place. They are, but <laughs> I mean, they do a pretty decent job yeah. at it, you know, for a good price. I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, haven't announced this game for uh, for Xbox One yet. Only 360. Wow. Bound by Flame, though, I saw a trailer for it. It actually does look pretty cool. Yeah. Plans for Zombies Guard Warfare just got some free DLC today. Uh, so by the time you hear this, it'll already be up there. Um, it's uh, a new map, a new mode, which is the mode is like uh, capture the gnome or something. You have to like capture a gnome and bring it back and score uh-huh. a point or something. It's really yeah. crazy. Capture the gnome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like capture the flag with a garden gnome. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Probably is. Um, and then also some new items for the characters. So you can uh, unlock those by getting the packs. Um, Titanfall Xbox One resolution may be bumped to 900p or 1080p uh, via a post-release update. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, more. And uh, Titanfall... Uh, this, this was uh, from Abby Hep, the uh, community spokesman there at Respawn. She was talking about uh, the possibility of new Titans, new maps, new modes, more narrative stuff, and even more new monsters in the well, DLC. Well, she did say Titanfall. that new Titans were unlikely. Yes. Oh. Yeah, she said it doesn't look like though because there's so many balancing things, that, you know, balancing, balancing acts yeah. that they have to use, do with the Titans. So she said, don't expect new Titans, but... Right. She did say possibility of new creatures, though. Yes, she did. Sounds good to me. And uh, some more narrative. I'm hoping that 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 means that they might add some more story based campaign DLC, missions. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of. I mean, they left the door open in a campaign for much more. Wide open. Yeah. Like I said, it felt like a half finished story to me. Yeah, it definitely did. You know, uh, they need to finish that. <laughs> they need to finish that. Uh, Earthlock, a new Japanese RPG for uh, Xbox One th- through the ID and Xbox One program. A lot of uh, ID and Xbox games been coming out here lately, yeah. um, and uh, I, I I love a good Japanese RPG, so uh, I'll be checking that out. Uh, it's, it's actually called Earthlock Festival of Magic. Um, it was actually a Kickstarter uh, thing, and uh, got a little of those Kickstarter took campaigns. off from there. It's a turn-based um, JRPG that puts in the mind both Breath of Fire and Harvest Moon. Sounds oh. good to me. Both of those games were yeah. pretty awesome. So, yeah, you know, be good. a little mix of this, a little mix of that, and uh, voila, Love Master Masterpiece. Especially yeah. the old school Breath of Fires were classic yeah. material. Yeah, especially Breath of Fire two and three. Yes, My favorites. Faves. Don't forget Harvest Moon. Now. There came an echo, okay, <laughs> to Xbox One next year, 2015. Been waiting for uh, that. Yeah? Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. Um, it's a PC uh, <laughs> okay. indie title. Okay, so it's a PC indie title. <laughs> and, uh, it raised just about uh, over 100,000 buh. 100,000 buh? 100,000 buh? It's uh, actually a voice commanded game. Uh, you, a field general. Yeah, you're a commander of a small squad, and you use the connect to do voice commands and order your units around the map. Sounds like frustration to me. accomplish yeah, various objectives. Um, Sounds like well frustration. Like no, over there. <laughs> like there came an echo, dude. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> there came an echo. Call of Duty Ghost Devastation DLC coming to Xbox One and Xbox 360. First on April third. That's the one with the new weapon. That's like a, the uh, new weapon's already out. Yeah, if, for, if you for a season, season pass, pass. Yeah, yeah. but that's it's pretty dope. Is it, yeah. Best Call of Duty weapon I ever used. Wow. Because I think you can switch it from like a sniper rifle to a from assault rifle to SMG. Yeah, from by the scope on it, right? Right. Yeah. 
Sounds good. It's awesome. Sweet. Awesome. And it's a, it's a real futuristic looking weapon, too. Yeah, I saw how it, it does look awesome. It looks uh, real dope. But yeah, yeah, you can switch on the fly between like a submachine gun and assault rifle. So you can go for that long range or the short range. It's, it's a jack-of-all-trades gun, and it does it well. Sweet. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4 details leaked? Wow. Here I thought we they were done with that. I was hoping they were, personally. Well, Trey, it's Treyarch's turn to make a game. No, Sledgehammer yeah, this year. Sledgehammer? Sledgehammer? Really? Yeah, well, remember because because now they're on a three year cycle. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's now. right. That's right. And yeah. Sledgehammer is doing this year's call. So they're going to take the reins to Modern Warfare. That's what that. That's the rumors. You know, I'm not even sure how I feel about that. But uh, yeah, me neither. Unless it looks really, really good, I'm, I I might skip Call of Duty this year if it's Modern Warfare Four. Yeah, me too. I don't, the only Call of Duty sequel I, I, I would be interested in seeing is a Black Ops me 3. Me too. I'd like to see a Black Ops 3. Other than that, I want to see brand new Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah, because Modern Warfare is just stale. Yeah. They played really it out. I mean, it, it it was a trilogy. Leave it at that. There's, yeah. there's no reason By at the all. time Modern Warfare 3 came out, it wasn't it nothing was, special. Yeah. yeah. But let's be honest. Call of Duties just aren't really nothing special anymore. Although I will say that Ghost Treyarch. had Ghost had a nice little spin with yeah. the extraction mode or extinction mode. Yeah, that's... they did. I think Infinity Ward's finally starting to get back on track. Mm -hmm. And uh, Treyarch's my favorite. Treyarch's yeah. my favorite too. I think both that... of the Black Ops games are phenomenal. Yeah, they are phenomenal. My man, love, love <laughs> my man. Um, so, and, uh, just a couple more little small things. Epic Games are working on a brand new unannounced IP. Uh, no word on what it is or where it's going, but, what uh... Whatever happened to Fortnite? That, that's what I was about to say. All we yeah. know, all we know is it's not Fortnite, so they're working on two games right now. Hmm. Uh, Walmart is about to start taking used games for store credit. I saw that. Look for, out, GameStop! <laughs> for store credit for Walmart? Yeah. Does it have to be on the video game section? I'm or? thinking no. I'm thinking you could probably use that anywhere in the store. Oh, oh man, it's yeah. awesome. We could turn in some old games and uh, buy some groceries for it. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. go buy that bag of chips. I mean, you know, <laughs> if you're hungry, you know, you do what you do. Uh -huh. All right. I'm just curious to see how easy it's going to be to do that. It's going to be so hard. It's Wal well, you know. It's Walmart. They'll probably make it fairly easy. The question is, will they have competent employees handling it? That's what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. The process will probably be easy. It's just a question of... And knowing are, the Walmart... Are those minimum wage employees going to be able to handle well, it? Well, it's the Walmarts around here yeah. have some pretty incompetent employees. They do. That's what worries me. And, yeah. uh... I mean, it could be a good thing. They could just be like, look at the disc, like, all right, right. I, I'm sure there are some Walmarts out there that have some decent employees. Right. You know, it, don't it, let me start hating on all Walmart employees. It's just yeah. around here. Here in our VA? area, yeah. yes. Norfolk, Hampton, Richmond? No. Very yeah. rude and just not helpful. And, hate their lives. You know, Half retarded. Yeah. What? Yeah. Here? <laughs> Thieves? I mean, uh, yeah. Thieves, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised that, they're, that Walmart in our area hasn't been robbed blind by their own employees. Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating to go to Walmart around here, but there are some good Walmarts. I'm there sure. is one in Pocosa. Yeah, there's one. There's one yeah, in York yeah. County. Yeah, yeah, that's York about Yorktown, Pocosa area. Good. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure there are. There. Yeah, yeah, there are some good. Yeah. There's one in Chesapeake that's really good. You know, there's some good ones around here too, but <laughs> the ones really close in our vicinity are terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Um, look how we're reviewing Walmart's. <laughs> we, did. we review it all at Frag Tag Radio from Walmart's to tennis shoes. Last and, time we were uh, here, I think we did cable for like an hour. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. I think that's actually probably a good place to end the episode. So uh, it's been a good show. And I'm and giving the next Walmart five frags. Oh. Bam! <laughs> Frag Tag Radio.